Hello everyone, I am Carlo Esther and welcome to today's interview session. I am with Mr. John St. Crystal Carlo and just a few days ago he published an ebook titled On Your Kitchen. We've gotten a lot of feedback about this amazing book and today we've invited him to answer a few questions, very interesting questions by the way, that will give us more understanding and throw more light on some certain things that we saw and found out in his book. So moving on to the first question for today, the book is titled On Your Kitchen, but there is this particular caption that says, a complete guide for an African man. So that brings me to my first question. Does it mean mm-hmm. that this book is strictly for men? Yeah, the, um, thank you for the opportunity to talk about this book I'm very passionate about. So the title of the book is, like rightly said, In Your Kitchen. And then the caption says, A Complete Guide for an African Man. So our target audience are African men. But women can actually go to the book. They have a lot to learn too. But what drove me to write the book is the issues men face in the kitchen. You know, from an African setting, women have more kitchen education compared to men from an African setting. So the book is there to fill this void that men have when it comes to kitchen education. Because I grew up in a house of um, three girls, three boys. I had three sisters and two brothers. So we had more of people doing the cooking job and all that. When I got into the high institution, I had myself in the room to do the cooking. So I realized that men need this kitchen training they get. And my parents did a very good job. But I feel like there are some things I didn't really learn from them, which I feel this book can actually teach all the men out there. So the book is strictly for men. For ladies, you are welcome to read the book. And please, at the reading the book, make sure your man or your husband or your brother is also reading the book because they are the, they are the sole um, audience for the book. I hope I answered the question. Yes, you did. Thank you very much for yes. your answer. Okay, so moving on to the second question, which is very... <laughs> okay, let's just move into the question. So one of the chapters of um, the book talks about how to win the heart of a woman through cooking. <laughs> so please, can you enlighten us on how that can be achieved? Okay, uh... Have I only had a woman to cook? Mm, I think I have, I think I have not. But one of the chapters of the book talked about women as a woman to cook in. And I'll explain how it works. But then you might need to go through the book to get the full Details. information, yes. But let me give you a context. When a woman comes to your house, probably someone you're dating or going to be married to, you don't always expect her to do the cooking all the time. You can tell her, relax, I'll do the cooking today. You start preparing the food. And one thing you need to do is, as you're preparing the food, give her part of the food to taste. Let's say I'm going to find the fish and the meat. While she's sitting down in the parlor anyway, you get her the meat to taste. So she would anticipate the actual meal. And then when you're done, you serve her the food. When she's done, you take the food, the plates back. You wash the plates, you keep the kitchen tight. Don't be warm in the kitchen. And then when she's also cooking, join her, ask her questions, what was Maggie used for, what was time <laughs> used for, you know, just get yourself involved, women love men that are willing to help them, and when they see that they are interested in the area of their life that has a lot of work, which is the kitchen part of the house, they will feel more interested in you, you get, so when, you, when she tells you she doesn't have, she's feeling tired to cook, don't insist, assist her, do the cooking, so these are the few things to so when you go through the book, you get the step-by-step way to do that. And it actually works. It has worked. And it's a good copy. So we know that as a man, you can actually win out of the woman to cook. And it's something that doesn't take much effort to do. So I think that's that for that question. Well, thank you very much for that answer. It shows that a lot of work was put into um, writing yeah, and yeah. publishing this book. And it also shows a certain amount of intentionality in what you do. Well, that is very nice. 
So moving on to the third and final question. Um, also, kitchen red flags were pointed out. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay. And I'm personally very curious to know more about these red flags and practical ways of avoiding and preventing these red flags. Yeah, one of the chapters of the book talks about red flags in the kitchen that men have. And one of them is men that serve food on stainless plates. <laughs> you don't have a visitor, don't serve him or her food on a stainless plate. Please get ceramic plates, please. And more especially if it's a female visitor, you don't do that. Make a to get one or two of them. You may not eat with it, but when you have visitors, you bring it out and serve them food. It makes it, I don't know, it just it makes, makes the food smooth classy. Yes. Nice. So if you don't serve food with ceramic plates, it's a red flag. That one, that's one. Next is if you don't have a kitchen apron. <laughs> so those of all that cook with Jesse, yeah. your shorts, your t shirts is not bad, but having an apron makes you look but it makes your food look sweet. Just the your appearance alone make the food have organization it gets. So I think getting an apron is a way to avoid the red flag of eating appearance. Imagine when you have a guest and you tell them to get something for you eat. And the next minute on your apron already, wow. In fact, they are already. In fact, they can't. They, they, they anticipate. Yes, they are already into the food and what you are doing. Even if you can't cook, you have you have to cover up for the lapses. And then the next thing is people that don't have bulb in their kitchen. You know, guys are used to when the the bulb in their kitchen goes off, they don't leave it out and they cook with their phone touch mm. or and all that. So it's actually a very big red flag. Most guys don't take care of their kitchen. They don't even. Pay attention to once they decorate the parlor and their room, they are doing it. So I think it's a red flag if your kitchen is not well decorated and illuminated. And also, if you pack stuff in your kitchen, you pack your textbook in your kitchen, you pack your clothes, your footwear in your kitchen. Nylon, I used to buy food five days ago in your kitchen. Everything in your kitchen. You charge your phone in your kitchen. You are young clothes in your kitchen. Please adjust it for our kitchens. <laughs> so I think thinking of kitchen too is a way to overcome the red flags. There are lots of red flags in that book and when you get the book you get to see the ones that are faulted in and the ones you can improve on. Alright, thank you very very much for your answers. I hope we've picked up one or two things. Honestly, the red flags, I didn't really take note of a few points. Like, I didn't know them before now, but I've learned one or two. So, once a very big thank you for making out time to answer yeah, our questions. Favorite. And I'm very sure the audience will be able to learn one or yeah. two. Thank you for your time. So, I just want to say to those who um, about who those are about to get the book and those who break the book, please don't have a boring kitchen. Try new recipes, try new things out. Be creative in the kitchen. 